What is going on people? Thought I'd make a little update here on what's been happening. Not much basically. Um, truck still in shop. Truck still hasn't been touched. I asked them, hey, is there anything you guys can do as far as um, getting me going? And they're like, oh no, there's nothing we can do. You're gonna have to, I don't know. They said, well, this shop doesn't do that kind of thing. And I was like, well, can you like program it to, to trick itself or whatever? Now I know there is a trick. Um, so what happened was they changed out the inlet or the outlet knock sensor to um, see if that changed anything now my understanding is this is like the first test they should have done um three weeks ago or uh, a month ago when when the truck first went into the shop um but it was the differential i mean it's not that hard to look at uh, Detroit, I think it's Detroit Diesel Diagnostics Link or DDDL, um, whatever their software is. But my understanding is when you do a diagnosis on these trucks, these emission trucks, is one of the main things you look at is the differential pressure between the inlet and the outlet knock sensor, right? So. And again, they were trying to blame uh, an air filter. And I'm like, you guys are out your fucking mind. There is no way that that air filter could cause <clears throat> any restrictions whatsoever. Again, they use these air filters on off-road vehicles. The foam filters are made not to clog, right? Like, uh, unless you got water in there somehow in your intake and, and it, it, it wets the filter and then yeah the, the the dust will stick to it but even then it's just i don't know but <clears throat> um so back to their thing is they called me and they're like well yeah we we, we uh the inlet uh, knock sensor is showing between the two is showing high. It's over 50 uh, parts per million. <clears throat> so I was just like, okay, well, go ahead and change it. <clears throat> I said, better yet, uh, why don't you just change out the one box? I don't know if I covered this in my last video because it's been like two weeks, I think, or a week or something. Shit. But if I did, oh well. Uh, if I didn't, uh, Basically, they're saying they did all the diagnostics. They changed out the um, <clears throat> the, um, the the knock sensor. They changed both knock sensors, actually. And they said, well, it's still reading above 50 uh, parts per million. Now, I know you can do a DOC uh, surface, uh, surface face test or something, which takes like five to eight hour regen. <clears throat> but... Uh, they don't like to do it because it takes too much time. So, anyways, uh, if, if, if this wasn't under warranty, I probably would have done it. But at what cost is this costing me now? Um, because I've been sitting now, this is going on the third week, and <clears throat> I... The latest update on when they will receive a one box is, what is it, December 29th, which means they won't get to it until after the first of the year, because I know they ain't going to button it up. And anyways, the 29th, when is the 29th? It is on a Wednesday. Yeah, so it's on a Wednesday. By the time they get it, even if they install it on a Thursday and I'm able to go pick it up on a Friday, what does that do for me? I'm not going to run, you know, there ain't shit going on on Fridays, especially up here. Now, I know there's people in the Midwest and everyone, well, you know, you've been sitting for three or four weeks. <coughs> uh, you should go out there and run. Well, out here, there ain't shit. The whole state fucking, it's Utah, you know. 
So I would probably end up going out after the first of the year. Now, I did go, well, I went to go look at one truck. Um, it was a 1995 cab over, uh, Freightliner cab over with a Series 60 Detroit in it. The guy said, oh yeah, it's good, it's good. It just, uh, it, it was used to move mobile homes. It's a three axle, uh, big fucking truck, man. I mean, big, nice, it, it's halfway decent truck. But it is a piece of shit truck. He's asking $15,000 for it. Now, I don't know. I, I told him, listen, and I guess one of his guys supposedly um, pulled out the, uh, look, I'm all orange. So the reason I'm orange is because I got a heater down here. I'm down in the basement. But uh, one of his guys pulled the alternator. Um, so he's like, well, that's the reason it won't start is because of the alternator. I said, listen, get it started. I said, w get it started once I hear it uh, and I take it out and everything's good. I said, you know, uh, it's got potential. I said, get the deck plate off because he's just got like a deck plate where the fifth wheel goes. It, it needs a lot of work. I said, you get, you get all that figured out? I said, you, you, we might have a deal, you know, just to have a truck sitting here in case something goes wrong with the other truck uh, like it did now. So I am looking at that, uh, I am looking at that option. Um, as you guys know, trucks are fucking outrageous, especially non-emission trucks. Oh, and now there's a DEF shortage supposedly coming. So it might be good to grab one of these trucks um, if you can find the right deal. Now this guy also said he had a 2002. Uh, he said he's gonna bring it down here because he's local. In, uh, in, U in Cedar City here. Um, but he did say he's got a 2002 uh, Peterbilt 387. So it's the aerodynamic uh, Peterbilt. Kind of looks like a T2000. Um, and it's got the 6NZ cat. He's, he's asking 25,000. Is it worth 25,000? I don't know. It doesn't have a rebuilt engine, but I figured if I could pick it up, <clears throat> sit on it, uh, you know, take it in, get it rebuilt, and uh, <clears throat> if everything looks good, then hell, I'll have a nice, you know, used truck sitting in case the Coronado goes down again. Or I could put somebody in the Coronado, maybe, and, uh, you know, keep the older truck for me. I don't know. I think it would be a wise choice to have a older non-emissions truck sitting. Now, once they change the one box, <clears throat> my truck could last for another, you know, four or 500,000 miles with no issues. Who the hell knows? Or once I get it out, it could just completely take a shit again right like if they still can't figure it out it could it could it could dive again and they had to go back in the shop so that's the options i'm looking at there was another truck as a peterbilt was it 95 or 97 uh peterbilt 387 with an n14 uh cummins that was just rebuilt they show they said they have all the paperwork on it um, it had an end frame and it only has 1500 miles on the end frame. Uh, and they said, everything works good. I wanted to go up there Thursday. It was up in Colorado. I wanted to go up Thursday to take a look at it. It looked pretty clean in the pictures. They were asking 35, five for it to me with a freshly, I mean, what, what is a rebuilt 20 grand, you know, 25 Thirty thousand dollars, maybe for for an N14. I don't know. I, I'm guessing. Let's say twenty thousand. Uh, so basically, you're getting, you know, you're paying fifteen thousand dollars for the truck. To me, if they had all the paperwork on it, um, and to me that that's not a bad uh, price. Is it a little overinflated? Probably. That truck probably went for about ten grand uh, without a rebuilt, maybe fifteen. So I don't know. 
Um, I'm just looking for anything right now um, to basically hedge myself against this Coronado. Um, because not running for three weeks, <clears throat> uh, I have to say it, it's hurting, but it's not killing me. It's just I, I'm bored out of my mind more than anything. I have been working on the house, but, uh, you know, not having the money come in kind of sucks. The cool thing is, is so I do three things with my, I guess, uh, accounts payable. Um, I have a factoring company, which, you know, they pay within a day or two. Um, I got my buddy that pays me. He, he pays me. I do the load. Then a week later, he pays me for the previous week. So he's a week out. I also don't factor loads. Um, I, I, I put in, you know, and I wait the 30 days. I was trying to get away from the factoring company. So I was starting to do uh, non-factoring loads. So I do have that coming in. And I think there's a check that's going to be coming in next week. At least I got a hold of them and they said, yeah, the check's been cut and it should be here next week. So <clears throat> I kind of got a steady stream of income just kind of trickling in. I was going to look at deferring the truck payment for, you know, uh, depending, right? If they were like, hey, it's going to be a month and a half, we ain't going to get it until mid-January, maybe the end of January, then I probably would have deferred a payment because that's money that I could go out and get another truck with, um, right? So anyways, I, I'm kind of looking at that. I'm kind of trying to stay between the twenty and $30,000 mark for an older truck and if i have to get it rebuilt i got a from what i understand uh two excellent uh shops here in town um so at least if you look at the reviews and i've dealt with the one shop up here probably geez man about 10 or 15 well probably about 12 years ago one of uh when i was in operations one of our trucks broke down up here it blew a turbo and they had it uh, fixed within a couple of days. So, <clears throat> and they did a good job on it. Um, but that that's basically that that's basically where we're at right now. Is I'm I might be looking for a, an older truck. Just keep my eyes out now. So that Peterbilt, what had what happened was <laughs> was. I called him up on Thursday and like, hey, I, I'll, I'll come take a look at it. I said, you know, if I like it, I got cash in hand. I'll come down and I'll pay for it. And he's like, well, I think we got a guy coming in uh, on Saturday. Uh, I'll call you. This was Wednesday. So he's like, I'll call you tomorrow and let you know. <clears throat> I'm like, well, fuck, dude. I, I got the cash in hand. Like, you're going to wait for Saturday for this guy. So anyways, he calls me back, which I guess is, is honorable. I, I mean, I don't know. He may have screwed himself. Um, but he calls the guy and cause I'm emailing him. I'm like, Hey, did you find anything out? I'm ready to come down right now. I will leave my house right now, drive five hours to come look at this truck. And, uh, Basically, he's like, well, the guy already bought a plane ticket and he's heading out uh, Saturday. So if that falls through, I'll let you know. So that kind of stinks. I'm guessing if you're going to buy a fucking plane ticket, uh, no matter what, you're going to buy the truck, right? Unless it doesn't run or unless it's, I, I don't know. But I figured you probably got a one-way plane ticket and you're just going to drive it back home. So that that I, I was really looking forward to that truck. Um the only thing I didn't like about it is it does have the Cummins N14. I'm not a big Cummins fan. And uh, let's just say I've had every Cummins I've had. There is always, I've always had a really, really bad experience with it. One, uh, they couldn't, this was way back when, and it was an N14. They couldn't find out what the problem was. They changed out all the injectors. They did, I mean, it sat, uh, they were working on it for two weeks. I was stuck in New York for two weeks. And uh, they still didn't figure it out. Um, the company I was with, they ended up sending a driver out to pick me up. So there was that. And then uh, one of the Cummins I had, it was in a International. And uh, it had something wrong with the fuel and nobody could figure it out. So 
Uh, me and me and uh, Cummins just uh, we don't get along. So, and anyway, if you see, I would say between seventy-five and eighty percent of guys that have their hoods open on the side of the freeway um, are Cummins engines. Second is a uh, uh, a Volvo, and third would be a Freightliner. That's just my experience out here in the West driving the I-15. Majority of them, once they're popped, you see the red engine. Um, and again, the other ones is a Volvo, and then the other ones is, is usually a Freightliner. So, but anyways, so I, I don't know. Maybe the cab over is in my future. I mean, I it, and it's pretty big. It's got a pretty good size sleeper on it. Um, it's not a bad little truck, but... Again, I, I can't see myself driving a freaking cab over. Oh, and then there's one in Vegas I was trying to go look at today because I'm heading down there today. Um, it's actually in Pahrump. It was a Ford LTL 9000. Um, it's got the Detroit Series 60 in it. It's a badass looking truck. Um, it's like all lowered and everything. It's a flat top, which I'm not too keen of. But uh, I think it's it's got a, a what do you say? It's got like fifty thousand miles on the rebuild. Um, but he's kind of flaky. He's like, well, I got a guy maybe that's gonna buy. He was selling a trailer and the truck, and the trailer was a piece of shit. It's like a forty-eight footer with a with a uh, lift gate on it, uh, roll door. I mean, it was a piece of shit. But he's like, I got a guy that's looking at it that 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 wants to haul hay. So. Uh, I'll let you know. Then I was like, dude, I'll come up right now, cash in hand. He's asking uh, $9,800 for it. So uh, I was like, wow, that would be perfect. That would be a perfect truck if it is rebuilt and it's in good shape. And uh, I think the truck, I don't think it had many miles on it either. Um, but it, it's if it's in good shape and everything works good on it, you know, for ninety eight hundred dollars to have a spare truck sitting here, um, that 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 I can go do, you know, if uh, if if the Coronado breaks down, I can go do a run with it, you know, because it ain't gonna be nothing to insure it. Um, and then again, I'll be the only driver on it. So to insure that truck for ten grand, you know, I'm probably looking at a, maybe a thousand bucks for the year, maybe. Um, it can't be that much. So, anyways, so that that I was waiting on him, uh, but again, he <coughs> he was flaky, and uh, he's like, well, you know, me and my wife got to go fucking Christmas shopping, and you know, we're going out, and then I don't know what we're gonna do. Like the the text messages he was sending me was just like super flaky. So, I I don't know what's what's going on with fucking people. If you're gonna post something for sale. Uh, sell the fucking thing, right? Don't sit there and jerk people around. Like that Peterbilt. I look, that was listed for 17 days. And as soon as I ask about it, of course, you got like a million people wanting to come look at it. So just my luck. But again, maybe that's the reason, you know, maybe I, I don't need to be buying another truck. Maybe just stick with the uh, Coronado and hopefully... All goes well, but uh, I'll tell you what though, if that Coronado gets fixed and it, it, it and it has no issues at all, when the truck prices start to come down, I'm definitely getting me a, a cash truck, older truck. I'd like to get a kitty cat um, or a Detroit. I'm gonna stay away from the Cummins. I don't wanna have anything to do with the Cummins. Uh, of course, if that Peterbilt comes available and it's got a fresh rebuilt on it, then I, I might heavily look into that thing and just, from what I'm understanding, the N14s, they just have a lot of uh, issues with the um, injectors, so. But from what I also understand is you can change out an injector on the side of the road, so I'll just carry an injector with me, you know, so. Anyways, guys, that's the update. If you got any questions, concerns, comments, whatever, let me know, it was a 20 minute video, so. Uh, I'll keep you up to date and let you know what happens. Thanks for watching. Bye.